Thank you, Vivian. And can I get our other speakers to come up and join on the panel? That's all right. Um, and we've just got a couple of things to do before we break for lunch. Uh, we're going to have some questions to our panelists. By the way, if you joined us today and you weren't sure how to log into Slido to ask questions, it's slido.com. And then the code is G2Z2019, which is also the hashtag for social media. So if you want to um, take a photo with your swag or, you know, nice getting to zero picture, uh, hashtag G2Z 2019 um, is great to, so that we can search those images. And uh, also, it's Are You OK Day? So I hope you're all OK. It's sort of hard to ask everyone individually, but over lunch it might be worth having a chat to, to people and asking if they're OK. And hopefully they are, but if they're not, <laughs> having a chat about it. Uh, OK, so we've got a couple of questions uh, for our panellists. Holly, uh, this one's for you, and, and this one, I don't know if F10 is available in the US, but uh, F10 kills everything, why not just use it? We don't have F10 in the US, so I'm not familiar with it, and I don't even know which category it goes under, but I would say that if you're certain that it kills everything and it's affordable, um, go ahead and use it. One thing to just think about uh, or remember is the potential for uh, respiratory irritation uh, for both staff members and animals. So I think I never did mention during my presentation, like bleach is a good example of that. Bleach is super affordable. It kills a whole lot of things, but you can actually increase your feline, er, your uh, feline, feline flu, is that what you call it? The upper respiratory, cat flu, <laughs> cat flu rates um, if you use it um, uh, on a regular basis and that causes upper respiratory irritation for uh, kitties. Thank you. Uh, Trish, how would you promote an animal that displays separation distress that might not suit a full-time worker or a busy person? Is that an adoption restriction? I, th I think all pets are individuals and all adopters are individuals. I do work with clients who have separation anxiety dogs who do work and because they work, they can afford to send the dog to daycare every day or they can they might have a neighbor who looks after the dog every day. So there, there are ways around it. So I, I don't like blanket restrictions on your, on your forms. The person who's home all the time and unemployed may not be able to afford to have somebody watch that dog when they, when they do need to go somewhere. So um, I, th I think conversation-based adoption is what to aim for. Um, talk to your adopters in my shelter they brought in open adoptions and I was the first one marching around saying no never no no I'm going to restrict adoptions but they when I had to start with yes or get my big boss in to say no I was able to adopt out some pets to people that at first glance I was like nope you are not suitable for this pet but once I talked to them and said well this is super high energy animal what are you going to do and they had it all figured out, you know. We, we need to give people the chance. So I don't, I don't, I protested open adoptions and I've done it the new way and I much prefer the new way now. Thank you. There was a question that just popped up for Holly but disappeared and um, that's because the answer is in your notes. So the question was about is there um, other resources for, like training people in cleaning and disinfection and so on. It's in the notes. So on in your lanyard there's that little magical USB and so many resources are linked to our presenters notes. So, so please when you go home have a read of that. There's so much more to get out of this um, summit apart from what's actually happening in the room. Um, Trish, again, um, do you believe you can overdo promos like waiving or reducing adoption fees at peak season um, by doing these on too regular a basis, a basis? Could that reduce the impact? I think a lot of people need an excuse to go to the shelter. Like there's a ton of people in your communities who are like, I might want to get a second dog. I've been thinking about a cat. And they need the excuse to step over the shelter door. So go go to the Asheville Humane page on Facebook and steal their ideas because they pretty much have an adoption promotion running all the time. I live in the south of the United States. We have huge animal overpopulation issues there. And that's where I got my fee-waived cat. That's where I got my uh, foster success um, cat. That's, it's, they have a nonstop barrage of um, 
specials and they have a nonstop parade of people coming in to adopt. So I, I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Um, Holly, if a foster carer only has carpets and upholstery in a foster room, which then is contaminated with virus, how do you recommend cleaning, or ringworm as well, how do you recommend cleaning this room? Well, that's, a, oops, sorry if that was loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, it is a tough question because I really don't think you can, um, unless you're willing to bleach it all. And, and then even then, it, that's dependent on something getting, penetrating down into all the little irregularities of the materials. So we really strongly recommend um, shelters think about that. Like if they do have upholstered or wooden furniture, you can certainly use it and take it in, but you should be prepared that you might need to part with it. And so this would be true for fosters as well and then that's something to think about with foster homes is if you do have a foster who you know their home did get contaminated with something that is hard to kill like ringworm maybe they're not um, maybe can't use them again in the future you know for for fostering so it's that is just something to be aware of okay next question is more of a comment um, Vivian, for discussion, plenty of FIV positive cats can coexist in households with FIV negative cats. This isn't an issue with rehoming. The issue is ignorance. You, don't, you, you can respond or not. <laughs> okay, um, I guess just from what I've seen, I mean, I'm only a student and I've only been to a certain few number of shelters. And um, from the ones that I've seen, yeah, a lot of them... Um, on the waiver will say, ideally, oh no, they will say, has to go to a um, home with no other cats and ideally no outdoor access, whether that's implemented or not, you can't really control. But then again, there are shelters out there who get FIV, uh, when they test FIV positive cats, they just euthanize them straight away because of that issue. Um, but I guess there's not really a consensus, so yeah. Yep. Okay, and also for you, Vivian, um, can it be assumed that the lower socioeconomic um, status areas don't keep their cats inside or desexed, and that's why FIV is more prevalent in those areas? Yeah, I mean, definitely, but again, that can go into what this paper can provide for the community, which is um, we can provide more education programs for those areas, whether that's vaccination or even just control of those risk factors, such as desexing and keeping those cats indoors. Okay, thank you. And if you want to read the full paper, you can download that online. It's open access, but also I think it's in the notes as well. So, uh, Trish, with long-stay dogs that are dog reactive, no kids, etc. No, okay, they, they're not supposed to be adopted with kids, I think. Not that the dogs don't have kids. Um, very confusing here. How would you get them out? Come to my workshop on <laughs> Saturday where we're going to discuss adoptability criteria. I think first we need to ascertain that the, shel the behavior is not shelter only. And if you look at Kristen's foster research, she's finding that a lot of dogs that are not so great in shelters are much better in a home environment. So find out if that is true. If the dog cannot be around children because it is stalking them in a predatory manner and will grab and shake and try to kill them, I would say that's a whole different decision. We need to not send them out. So, um, And many of the dogs who are reactive on leash only or in kennel only will also not show this in a home. So I think find out what the, I, I would say short-term foster would be a good um, way to find out which of these dogs are safe to rehome. If they're not safe to rehome, don't rehome them. And if they are safe to rehome, you will know a lot more about them once they've been out of the shelter for a bit. Thank you. That first question is the one that popped up before, answers in the notes. Um, next question for Holly, socialization of, whoa, it's all changing. Um, socialization of foster animals, especially babies, is not also compatible with confi confinement. How do you suggest the balance of this with disease risk? Yeah, I completely agree. It is a tricky um, thing to balance. And so, um, you know, I think it depends on if you have a foster who's a singleton all by themselves, that's something that you're going to, that Kitty's going to depend on you to socialize it. Um, as I mentioned, I am not compliant with uh, keeping my foster kittens uh, confined. And so they get socialized with my adult cats, but my adult cats are all healthy and vaccinated and whatnot. Um, so that is something, you know, that you could utilize that. Although 
I feel like they use that with caution. Be careful about that. So if you have um, kittens that are in a litter, they'll be socialized with each other and then just the people that are coming in. So most shelters in the U.S., very rarely do they uh, foster just one kitten out by themselves. They usually pair them together for socialization purposes. Thank you. All right, we'll end our panel there because we've got a couple of other um, little things on our agenda first. Um, another note that's just come to me, uh, the launch of the International Association of Animal Behaviour Consultants Shelter Behaviour Certifications. Um, as part of that launch, there's 15 free IAABC memberships and certification applications to give away. So to be in the running for that, go to the room in Slido that's marked IAABC Shelter Cert and tell us why you should win. Um, so if you, if you jump on there, and then we're gonna have a poll shortly. So if you just get onto Slido, go into the room marked IAABC Shelter Cert and tell us in 150 words or less why you should win. And now we've got a poll happening. Oh, so what does beyond the shelter mean to you in one word? So if you can get onto Slido and start entering what you think it means, that would be great. And then, oh, we're already getting some words coming up. This is great. Home, life, foster. Happiness, growth, learning. It's all happening here. Community, hope. So some of the words are bigger. They're ones that multiple people have checked, and that's okay. It's progressive, rehabilitation, connecting, freedom, positive, opportunity, education, change, love, life-saving, innovation, growth, success. This is awesome. It's amazing watching this little cloud come together. Community is a big theme there. We'll just give it another minute. So if you're not on Slido, then lean over and tell a friend your word. They can put it in for you. Or make a friend. Awesome, I love that. Community's persisting there. Fostering's a big theme for the last couple of days. Hope. All right, people have got their heads down. They're in the zone. It's good. Okay, so um, before I can let people go, we have to have the obligatory quiz, and I've made up the questions, so speakers, I hope I've got them right. Um, and because I'm so uh, deficient in so many areas, I'm going to get our speakers to, you've got to work out who's, um, who's, got the first, who's up first, okay? So the people in the audience, you're going to have to get the attention of our speakers, not me. And our speakers will tell me who said something first, uh, and then we'll hear your answer. So don't yell out the answer. No, this is a hard one, but just don't. <laughs> okay, first question. Ooh, it's a yes or no. Hmm. I know, this is going to be brutal. Can you disinfect organic matter? What do we think, Holly? Correct. So you get a prize. Um, just head to um, the Getting to Zero registration desk. Uh, Diane's just waving over there. So she's taken note of the lady in white. Excellent. All right. This one's a harder one, so be ready. You might need to go to your handwritten notes, which I saw someone diligently making. This person over here is like writing notes. In fact, you're writing them right now. Still incredible. Um, <laughs> what are the four types of physical disinfection? Have we got three? Have we got three? Someone's got three. Is it? Oh, sorry. Speakers, who, who do we think? Can someone help her out? Okay, there's one missing. Can someone help? Radiation? Who said radiation? 
You did. Okay, lady in the, is it leopard print that you're wearing? Okay, that is gorgeous. All right. So you guys can each have a prize. I hope that's all right. Is that all right? No, you're special. You get one. All right. Don't don't be humble. Okay. I don't, I, that's it's not a time for false modesty. All right. Everyone's a winner here today. So you're going to get something. You're either going to get that or a tennis ball thrown at your head. So take the prize, I say. All right. Um, okay. And this is a two-parter. What is a fomite? And give us an example of the number one fomite. Wow, you went extra. Okay, so I was looking for hands, but you just said the whole lot. So, okay, so Michelle Gallo gets a prize as well. And we have one more question. I think this will be a reasonably easy one. What is the main route of transmission for FIV? <laughs> who, is, who do we think got it? Speaking panel? So good. I thought you were just going to say cat bite, but you went the whole science. Excellent work. All right, that is fantastic. Um, and now I'm going to throw. I'm going to try and throw tennis balls without doing any damage this time. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> your lap, but not your laptop, so that's good. Okay, all right, excellent. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you at one o'clock sharp after lunch. Thank you.